RCX is in range. Pick up your RCX and move around the room. If the RCX stops you, Today we look at set 3804, the Robotics Invention System 2.0. Nominally and practically an upgrade to the older releases, this 717 part set debuted in 2001 and it almost feels like an entirely different product. LEGO sold the final RIS revision as a standalone SKU and as a software-only upgrade to the Intermediary 1.5, which we will look at briefly before getting into the 2.0. The middle child of the line arrived in 1999, and LEGO also sold it as a standalone or as an upgrade, but this time with both software and parts. We updated our 1.0 software to 1.5, though the wizard indicated that it uninstalled 1.0 and installed 1.5 rather than modifying anything. During the installation process, we saw some ads for other robotics invention system products, and some screenshots of the 1.5 software itself. The installer also tried to update QuickTime and DirectX. 1.5 features the same main menus as 1.0, but it packs much more aggressive intro videos. We will show some of these at the end of the video and timestamp them in the comments. The Challenges UI gets a bit of a rework, as do the challenges themselves. 1.5 has a mix of 1.0 models and some new ones in the Roverbot and Inventorbot families. The interface update also comes with new narration and sounds, though the design, program, and test workflow largely remains unchanged. As with the Droid Developer Kit and perhaps other contemporary LEGO software, we can easily access all of the application's assets, a collection of bitmaps, sounds, and videos, with just a little bit of searching. After exploring the 1.5 software a bit, we upgraded it to 2.0. Again, the installer wanted to remove the old app and add the new one, as well as update DirectX. No mention of QuickTime this time. The process again showed other contemporary RIS products, and it also pushed the Mindstorms website. After the initial setup, we also had to install the driver for the new IR tower, more on that in a bit, and of course, download firmware to the RCX. With this second upgrade, the rest of the UI receives new graphics, less appealing ones in my opinion, and a little reorganization. The challenges split into standard and pro, and the guided mode lock turns into a simple checkbox. The standard challenges come from 1.5, but the pro challenges get interesting. They look significantly more complex than anything from the previous two revisions. Backtracking a little bit, we take a look at the extra parts from the 1.5 upgrade. 
some axles, lift arms, and a few other miscellaneous bits, including a clutch gear. 2.0 makes its seemingly more advanced models from just these and the core parts. Neither upgrade came with extra motors or sensors. A standalone 2.0 technically had some new electronics, the new USB infrared transmitter and a new RCX revision. The tower no longer needed a battery, but it needed a Windows driver, which made it a bit of a trade-off rather than a strict upgrade. Recall the clip at the start of the video. The range seems very good indoors, though we did not test outdoors, nor did we test the old tower. The RCX itself lost its power jack, and LEGO removed the relevant capacitors and power circuitry from the internal PCB as well. I assume they did this to cut costs. I don't think the actual hardware specifications changed between the various revisions. The outer casing also got some minor modifications. And now a closer look at the 9738 remote control, which came in very handy for testing the complicated 2.0 models. We featured this item in some previous videos, but we did not look inside. The plastic casing clips together entirely with snaps, which proved somewhat challenging to pop even with a set of spudgers. This whole device actually looks extremely outsourced. The generic looking front face has a full grid of holes partially covered by a branded cardboard sticker. The rubber membrane also omits the bumps from the covered buttons. It looks like Alps, the PC touchpad manufacturer makes the PCB, but we don't know about the rest of it. All challenges have the same fundamental design, program, and test phases, but the pro challenges have more explicit and less complete instructions than the Constructopedia. Each model has two sets of photos, one for some pseudo steps and the other for a quote unquote 3D view. In practice, the steps felt quite adequate and we rarely had to refer to the 3D view. If anything, a parts call out might help more. Having looked at some standard challenges already, we built three pro models for this review. We started with the robotic arm, as we had seen pictures of it over the years, but never built it. This model uses one motor to rotate and another motor to grab and lift objects using an underactuated mechanism, typical of Technic sets of the 80s and 90s. The two touch sensors act as limit switches and the light sensor looks down from the hand. Various cosmetic greebles adorn the model, a trend that continues with the other models. Despite its generic sounding name, the arm actually offers fairly limited functionality with its three degrees of freedom. It can pick up an object and rotate it somewhere along an arc, but it can't translate or orient the payload in any other way. The object also needs to have a certain shape and start at a precise depth, lest the arm fails to grip it or just knocks it away. 
the light sensor also has trouble with certain colors. Another trend that continues. The candy sorter feels like a more sophisticated version of the control center picker. It attempts to sort items automatically based on their color. Again, one motor controls the rotation, but the other controls both the conveyor and the feeder, one in each direction. The premise seems simple enough, but this challenge gave us much trouble in practice. We could not find balls of the perfect size, so we tried using marbles and then GVC balls. Both proved too small. They would stagger in the loader and double feed often. It looks like the chute wants something the size of a Zammer sphere but we decided to work around the problem with a minor hardware modification. Adding a rail behind the flap fixed the double feed, but the machine still would not sort. We suspected that the light sensor, not a color sensor, could not differentiate outside of optimal inputs but a controlled test showed otherwise. It turned out that the still staggered balls didn't drop perfectly in front of the sensor and the gap messed up the readings. We felt that it would only work with properly sized balls and we decided to move on. The delivery bot picks up a stand and moves it around. One motor drives the machine using a reverse and turn mechanism, while the other motor drives the treads that grab and release the stand. The light sensor detects when something enters the mouth. One touch sensor detects when it hits the back of the throat, and the other touch sensor allows the machine to feel for the stand. Initially, the steering had trouble recentering, but we fixed this in software by tapping on the drivetrain. The first time we made a significant tweak to the stock programming. Otherwise, this bot worked pretty well, despite also offering fairly limited functionality. The single bumper limits sensing to one side, and the primitive drivetrain hinders overall movement. Finally, a quick look at the challenges we skipped. Security Vault opens two different doors depending on the entered combination. Refrigerator Fred checks to see if lights turn off probably more of a standard challenge in the end. Artbot does another take on the various plotter bots we have seen in other sets. The limited functionality of all these machines, perhaps reflective of actual robots, doesn't detract from the impressive variety of models. Like the 1.0, the 2.0 still doesn't do much with the programming. In an ideal world, everything works out of the box. I don't know what they intended, but contemporary STEM sets like the Boost definitely do a better job of walking users through the code. Anyway, in the next installment of this series, we will look at one of the other expansion sets. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do, and have a nice day. Animation of the model you will need to build for the challenge. You decide if you want to accept the challenge. Each challenge begins with a list of design requirements 
You can build the robot on your own or use the Constructopedia for step-by-step -step building instructions. When you are finished building your robot, you program it using all the robotics invention system has over 700 Lego pieces, including sensors, motors, gears, and more. Use pieces from your other sets, too. The system features the RCX, a Lego microcomputer that acts as the brain of your inventions. The RCX takes input from sensors, then it activates motors to drive the robot's the challenge is to create a robot to dispense candy and then sort it according to color. Use candy or another spherical object that can fit in the dispenser. You can make sorting bins out of Lego pieces or use cups. The Pro Challenge design briefs consist of three sections, an overview, a 3D view, and key steps. Make sure you explore each section.